The Name Jar by Yang Suk Choi. The Name Jar. Through the school bus window, Yoon Hai looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Yoon Hai's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name? Yoon Hai had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Yoon Hai, surprising her. Yoon Hai looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Yoon Hai answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Yoon Hai, said Yoon Hai. Uni, the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, 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 ni? Some kids chanted. No, no, Yoon Hai corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Yoon Hai. Oh, it's you hey, the boy said, like, you hey. What about hey, you? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened and Yoon Hai hurried to get off. You hey, bye-bye, the kids yelled as she left, and Yoon Hai felt herself blush. Yoon Hai stood in the driveway of her new noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? Asked a curly haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? He asked cheerfully. Yoon Hai nodded and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kokotos, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokotos thanked him and greeted Yoon Hai. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yoon Hai smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Yoon Hai pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokotos showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Yoon Hai kept thinking about her name. How was school, Yoon Hai? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Yoon Hai simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a, a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you're a good Korean. I will, replied Yoon Hai, but, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Yoon Hai is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Yoon Hai complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. 
You are different, Yunhai, her mother said. That's a good thing. Yunhai just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Yunhai and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fadil's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti-painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, a Korean-styled spicy pickled cabbage and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Yunhai's favorite, for soup. It made Yunhai smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Yunhai. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Yunhai nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said, and what is your name? Yunhai, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean Grace? Yunhai nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said, as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Yunhai. That evening, Yunhai stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hi, my name is Shuzi, she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning, when Yunhai arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Yunhai took one out and read it aloud. Daisy. That's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Yunhai took out the rest of the paper. Tamala, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Yunhai nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over Yun, Yunhai's face. Ralph quickly said, We'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all and you'll have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day and Yunhai looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Yunai turned around to see the curly-haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you? Don't you have any name? Yunai thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me in Korea. I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Yunhai said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day, 
the jar got fuller with more names, and Yunhai read them all. She found a few names she liked, Miranda, Stella, Avery. They sound interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I've put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. And everyone thought about this. When Yunai got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, To my Yunhai, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here, the moon is up, but there is sun. But there, the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are and no matter how different America is from Korea, You'll always be my Yunhai, your grandma forever. Yunhai took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Yunhai walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Yunhai. Hello, Mr. Kim, Yunhai replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer, turning around, and it was Joey. Your name is... Unhee? He asked her with his eyes open wide. And Yunhai looked quickly at Mr. Kim, and then she turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Yunhai, and it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Yunhai, Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly. It made Yunhai smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday. Yunhai, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Yunhai came to class early to look at the names one last time. But the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper. Paper with a name on it. Yunhai slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Yunhai said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokotos's desk or on any other desk. And it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. As other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon... Mr. Kokotos came in and Ralph shouted at him. The name jar is gone. The jar with all the names in it. Gone, Mr. Kokotos replied with a look of concern. He asked Yunhai, did you get a chance to read all the names? Yunhai nodded and she took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Yunhai wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I liked the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class, but I realized that I liked my name best. So I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Yunhai Yun means grace. 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 Inhai shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Yin hai un ye on hai Yun hai said her name again slowly and clearly, and soon the kids began to say it better, even Mr. Kokotos. They applauded Yun hai's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Yun hai. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokotos reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Yunhai heard her new friends say goodbye. Bye, Yunhai. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Yunhai. 
You and I said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. You and I, you and I, come downstairs. Mother called up to you and I, your friend is here. You and I rushed down to see who she meant. And there stood Joey. And in his arm was, arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? Asked Yoon Hai breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? He asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Yoon Hai said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Yoon Hai. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chinku, read Yoon Hai. That means friend. And Chinku smiled back. The Name Jar, written by Yang Suk Choi.